The ASUS ZenScreen gives you a second or third monitor while on the go. IU Gear has the perfect portable USB-C docking station for Windows, Mac, and Linux laptops. And Kingston has all the storage that a mobile geek needs. On this episode of Hands on Tech, you're getting Padres Travel Tech, part two, storage and connectivity. This is Twit. Hands on Tech is brought to you by IT Pro TV, providing effective training with access to virtual labs and practice tests. Visit go.itpro.tv slash twit to take advantage of their lowest prices ever. And for an additional 30% off for the lifetime of your active subscription, use the code TWIT30 at checkout. Previously on Hands-On Tech, I gave you my choices for powering and protecting your gear while on the go. Now that we've got the right bag, the right battery, and the right power options for geeking on the go, it's time to add those pieces of tech to my tech travel kit that will make my work easier. Now, when you need to move your workstation from your office to your mobile workspace, one of the biggest losses is that second or third monitor. We've become accustomed to having multiple monitors on the desktop and going back to the single screen, no matter how nice it might be, can really cramp your workflow. That's why my storage and connectivity gear starts with this, the ASUS ZenScreen. Now, ASUS makes several versions of the ZenScreen, including one that has its own internal battery and one that only works on USB-C equipped devices. But I prefer this one, the $240 ZenScreen MB169AC. It's a 15.6 inch 1920 by 1080 full HD monitor with an IPS panel for wide viewing angles. Now the, the Zen screen is about the size of a medium ultrabook at 8.9 inches high, 0.3 inches thick, 14.2 inches wide, and 1.7 pounds heavy. It has a single USB-C port for power and connectivity, but the Zen screen isn't just a USB monitor. It's a dual mode display device. Now, if you have a USB-C port that has display port alternate mode, then the Zen screen acts as a pure, no latency display port monitor. If your laptop doesn't support alternate mode, then the Zen screen acts as a display link USB monitor, connecting either through a USB-A port or Thunderbolt 3. Now, Asus includes all the gear that you need to connect, the monitor, the cover that doubles as a stand, a USB-C cable, and an adapter to turn your USB-C back into USB-A. By the way, you actually need this monitor. That's not possible to do this with the USB-C only version. Uh, you have access to the advanced display settings through ASUS's display widget, and the screen does support auto rotation, though that's a feature that I almost never use. At first, when I got this version, I was concerned that the Zen screen wouldn't survive the kinds of miles that I travel, but I've been using one of these for more than three years now, and I haven't had a single issue. In fact, aside from the power accessories I listed in the first part of this hands-on tech special, this is the one piece of tech that I refuse to travel without. Now, a second monitor is a great productivity booster for working on the go, but I'm a content creator, which means I also need storage, a lot of storage, and not just any storage, but fast storage. When I'm traveling, it's not unusual for me to have a few terabytes of video assets and I need to offload gigabytes of newly created content every day. Now, the SSD in my laptops aren't nearly big enough and external hard drives are nice, but they're just too dang slow. If you need to transfer two terabytes of data, you can't be waiting a day for it to finish. What I need is a storage medium that is big enough to store my assets, fast enough to let me edit directly from the storage device rather than copying on and off of my internal SSD, and robust enough that I'm not going to be worried that a strong enough bump might destroy hours of irreplaceable footage. That's why I only carry SSDs, specifically Kingston SSDs. Uh, when I first started moving my storage to solid state, I had multiple SSDs, each in their own external USB to SATA enclosure. That works, but it also takes up a lot of room unnecessarily. You see, I never have more than two SSDs connected at any given time, and SSDs are already so much more durable than hard drives that I don't really need the weight and volume that's taken up by dedicated enclosures. So what I decided on is a stack of naked Kingston SSDs with a single swappable enclosure and one USB to SATA adapter. Now, before I go on, I should explain why I'm into Kingston. You see, I've used every SSD manufacturer on the market, literally hundreds of SSDs, and I tend to go for Kingston, Samsung, and Intel in terms of performance. However, of the three, 
Kingston is the only SSD manufacturer that I've used that hasn't had a single unit go bad on my watch. That kind of reliability, combined with a great price-performance ratio, has earned my loyalty. Now, like I said, I have two ways to connect SSDs in my closure. The first is a HyperX case that came with my HyperX upgrade kit. It's just got a sliding cover. Now, this is nice, but again, it does take up a little bit more weight and a little bit more space. So what I have is my second adapter is this. This is a $9 Sabrent USB 3.0 DOSATA adapter. Now, both of these will transfer up to 5 gigabits per second and are backwards compatible with USB 2.0. Uh, what they connect to my laptop is, quite simply, every SSD in my inventory. I'm using Kingston UV500 series of SATA SSDs. The UV500 series uses 64-layer 3D TLC NAND flash driven by a Marvell 88SS1074 controller. This is actually important. That's not just alphabet soup, because the controller that Kingston uses has a lot of processing power, way more than is required for a typical SSD. Kingston made that choice so that they had more breathing room to add more functionality without taxing the hardware or having to redesign. The end result is that you get the typical 520 megabytes per second read, 500 megabytes per second write, along with hardware-based AES 256-bit encryption. And before you ask, no, Kingston's SSDs never had the recent problem with weak encryption. You also get 79,000 IOPS read and 50,000 IOPS write with less than a 0.2 watt draw at idle and 2.3 watt at max write. Now, the UV500 series comes in a series of capacities. $40 for the 240 gigabyte version, $75 for the 480 gigabyte version, $140 for 960 gigabytes, and fresh off the line, a brand new 1.92 terabyte version for 300. That means the sweet spot is going to be that one terabyte version. Practically, this means that my travel kit has external storage that is fast enough to use as primary storage, and it also means that I can carry 10 to 20 terabytes in a kit that's practically indestructible. Of course, SSDs are an essential part of my tech travel kit lifestyle, but I also carry a few specialty storage items when on the go. The first is this. This is the Kingston Micro Duo 3C. It's a unique flash drive in that it has two interfaces. It's got a USB Type-A on one side and a USB-C on the other. Combined with a 100 megabytes per second read rate, a 15 megabytes per second write rate, and OTG, so it does work on your mobile devices, I can easily and quickly move files between my laptop and my phone or tablet. Now, these drives are ridiculously affordable. It's 32 gigabytes for $10, 64 gigabytes for $19, and 128 gigabytes for 31. So the 128 gigabytes is your sweet spot. It's a good idea to have a few of these in your bag because they almost act as disposable storage. Hands on Tech is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Experienced IT professionals, people working in the business, but who are great teachers. In fact, IT Pro TV was just named CompTIA's official video training partner. All you have to do if you want to become a member of the IT Pro TV family is buy a standard membership. That's $28.50 a month. But wait, but wait, hold on. <laughs> if you use the offer code TWIT30 at go.itpro.tv slash twit, you'll save 30% off forever as long as you stay active. Visit go.itpro.tv slash twit. Use the code TWIT30 for an additional 30% off of the lifetime of your active subscription. IT Pro TV. The second specialty storage device I carry is, well, it's a bit more for the super paranoid people. It's the Kingston Digital Data Traveler 2000. This is, well, way, way more expensive than the Duo. The 16 gigabyte version sets you back $95, and my 64 gigabyte version costs a budget-breaking $150. However, what you get for that price is a unique encrypted and hardened storage device. The Data Traveler 2000 uses AES 256-bit encryption and is FIPS 197 compliant for you enterprise users. Unlike some other encrypted drives that are really just secured controllers with your data stored unencrypted on the flash memory itself, the Data Traveler 2000 is hardware encrypted through and through. If someone were to remove the memory from this drive and try to read it another way, it would still be encrypted. The drive has its own encryption engine, with the encryption key accessible only by inputting the right user-defined code on the keypad. This means that unlike BitLocker or any operating system-based encryption, the Data Traveler is OS agnostic. 
It works on Windows, OS X, Linux, Chrome OS, Android, and any OS that can recognize a USB flash drive. It also means that you have complete control over the encryption key so that you can trust no one. Now, the admin features of the Data Travelers mean that you can set read-only access or configure the drive to dump its keys if there are too many failed attempts to access the drive. That's the mode that I use whenever I'm traveling into what I would consider a hostile space. This is the only secure USB device that I trust with sensitive data when I'm traveling. It may not be the fastest storage device I have, and it's definitely not the largest capacity, but it's unrivaled for sheer data protection. And if you work on the road, that can be a necessity. Speaking of necessity, I'm really not happy with the trend to remove all ports from laptops. It depends on the long string of dongles to do anything that you need to do. But at least I can suggest a single dongle that might, might have every peripheral that you need. This is the IO Gear GUD3C08 USB-C Pocket Dock. This $90 dock is, well, it's an 8-in-1 for users with USB-C laptops. I was a big fan of the previous version. That's this one, the IO Gear 3C06. And IO Gear has built what they learned from the 6 into the 8. First, the Pocket Dock is a high pass-through device. That means it can accept up to 100 watts, use 15 watts, and pass 85 watts onto the laptop, of course, depending on your power source. It supports both HDMI and VGA video ports. The HDMI port is capable of 4K at 30 hertz, though you can only use either the HDMI or VGA port, not both simultaneously. I know some might worry about that VGA port, but I've been in enough situations when VGA was the only option, and it's nice to have it built into the pocket dock. The Pocket Dock's aluminum housing is filled out with SD and micro SD card readers, gigabit Ethernet, two USB A3.0 ports, and one battery charging 1.2 port. One of my favorite features is the detachable USB C cable. Most of these docks have the cable built in, which isn't always convenient. With a detachable USB C cable and a hideaway storage port for that cable, the Pocket Dock is easier to store and more flexible in use. Now, the last bit of connectivity tech that I've started including in my tech go bag since I moved overseas is the Kensington International Travel Adapter. You can find a version of it for between $25 and $50, depending on the type of features you're looking for. This device works well with all the worldwide voltages, from 100 to 240 volts AC, and has a series of retractable prongs to adapt to any socket type, as well as one or two 2.4 amp USB ports. This device is absolutely essential if you spend any time bouncing between countries with different plug types. Not only will it allow you to connect your primary power adapter, but the USB port means you have yet another way to charge your various gadgets. Just as I mentioned in part one of the Hands-On Tech Travel Special, you need to build a travel kit that works for you and for your gear. But these are the products that I've added to my travel kit after years of practical experience. With all the gear I travel with, from the Anchor battery and DC charger, to the IO Gear AC adapter and pocket top, to my Asus Zen screen, Sabrent USB adapter, Kingston SSDs, and USB storage devices, my Mobile Edge Core backpack weighs less than 10 pounds, plus my laptop. And I still have an enormous amount of space for more peripherals or travel sundries. Now, I want to hear from you. What do you like in my tech go bag? What tips and secrets do you use when you're on the road? What gear would you like to see me take on a long-term trial run to see if it can survive in the rarefied air of the elite mobile Uber geek? Let me know at twitter.com slash PadresJ and maybe we'll get a part three with all the gear that you want. Till then, I'm Father Robert Balasair, the digital Jesuit, just happy to get hands on tech. Keep up with all the hottest tech news and gadgets. Visit twit.tv. There you'll be able to find and subscribe to all our tech shows. Thanks for watching Hands on Tech.